No surprises. One thing we dislike are hidden fees and secret charges buried in the bill. Tell me exactly what I'm getting and precisely what it costs. That's a fair deal. Now, in some regions of the world, every time you buy something, there's a process of bargaining, negotiation that begins. But here in America, the only thing we ever haggle over are insignificant purchases, like a new car. And the reason that we bargain over a new car is because there's so many options that they probably don't have exactly what you're looking for on the lot. It's the wrong color, it doesn't have this feature, so let's negotiate the price as a compromise. And I go away content, but ultimately unsatisfied. I didn't get exactly what I wanted. The gospel should never be compromised. This is the point of Paul's very passionate farewell address to the church at Miletus. And it's passionate because he's going to Jerusalem and the Spirit has been telling him that when he gets there, he's going to endure suffering and ultimately the end of his life. So he's full of passion and he says, I did not shrink from telling you the entire plan of God. And they don't want him to leave. They're so satisfied by hearing the fullness of the gospel. There's so many pressures on us to compromise the gospel in different ways. Tell us that we can overlook this moral teaching. Tell us that this inconvenient scripture passage doesn't really matter. When we do that, like with a new car, people will go away content for a moment, but ultimately unsatisfied because they're looking for life. And Jesus says in our gospel, this is life that you should know the only true God and the son whom he has sent. And we can't really know God without embracing everything that he wants to give us. So whatever your role is in the church, a lector, a catechist, maybe just somebody people come to for advice, give them the gospel without compromise.